Hello and welcome. I'm Govind Raj Ethiraj. A new variant of the SARS-CoV-2 has emerged. Uh, this is uh, right now being found in the south of uh, south and the east of England. It's believed to be behind a rapid surge of cases in uh, that part of England. It is being referred to as the VUI or the variant under investigation 202012 stroke 01 or the B1.1.1.71 lineage. Uh, these details may not matter, but what may matter, of course, is what this disease can do and is it uh, conceptually or fundamentally more dangerous uh, than the first and the primary uh, variant. So, there have been over a thousand cases in the England uh, around December 13th, but are rising. Uh, the result of this has been that many countries have suspended flights uh, to and from England and there is a general sense of fear with uh, the financial markets also responding and uh, crashing in uh, many cases. So, the question therefore is, or the set of questions therefore are, uh, how dangerous is this new uh, mutation of the coronavirus? Second, uh, is this something that we did expect uh, even in the back of, my, of our minds? And if so, uh, and if it's normal that such mutations happen, how do we prepare for them uh, in future as well? And thirdly, what should our specific response be in continuation to our existing response uh, to uh, the overall uh, COVID-19 virus uh, and, uh, over the last nine months or so? So to discuss this, I am now joined by uh, Dr. Srinath Reddy, President of the Public Health Foundation of India. He was uh, formerly uh, the head of uh, Department of Cardiology at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. He's also a adjunct professor of epidemiology at uh, Harvard. He's also been a physician to two prime ministers in India. Dr. Reddy, thank you very much for uh, joining us. So your uh, first uh, rea reactions or comments on what this new variation or mutation is all about. Well, uh, this particular variation is supposed to have about 17 different changes from the previous uh, virus that has been isolated. So there are 17 different areas of mutation or variation, as you can call it. And that seems to confer a much greater degree of infectivity to this virus, uh, particularly when you're really looking at where the spike protein, which is the kind of key which the virus uses to enter the cell, and then it takes over the cell's genetic machinery to reproduce itself. Then this particular spike protein has been altered to some extent. Now, it is making it much more infectious. Its ability to enter the cells and then take over the machinery and start replicating in large numbers is becoming easier for it now. It also appears that because of these multiple changes in its structure, it may be more infectious even to young people. Previously, it was thought that children and young people are less vulnerable to infection. Now, if it is infecting children too in large numbers, then we are going to have a matter of concern. Even if they're not going to be very ill, they will actually carry the virus to many people. Does it make this virus more virulent? As of now, there is no evidence for that, that this is likely to become more virulent, virulent, it's more infectious. In terms of um, infection, if you become much more infective, then you do not become more virulent because then you will uh, uh, sort of exhaust your host. And that's not very logical for the virus to continue its own uh, species. So at the moment, the worry is about the infectivity. But even if it doesn't become more virulent, we are concerned because if very large numbers are infected, many more than before, then even if the same fraction of people get seriously ill or die, that means in absolute numbers, we are going to see more serious people and more uh, li likely deaths. So that's the cause for worry. Right. And uh, uh, tell us about uh, the why this happens. I mean, is this something that is, uh, is, is a, in some sense a logical, chronological, uh, you know, sequence as in uh, uh, nine months or one year have passed and therefore it was logical that it would mutate. And when it when uh, viruses like this mutate, is it only does it only become more dangerous? Could it also become less dangerous? Well, uh, basically, they can become less dangerous, too. But in this particular case, the virus actually appears to have gathered more infectious nature. And whether it has altered the virulence characteristics is not yet certain, but doesn't appear to be so. But frequent changes in structure are well known in viruses. 
In fact, a couple of changes are likely every month. And in fact, it's been well known, but it is also a part of the adaptive nature of the virus. If you're trying to hem in the virus and trying to re restrict its mobility, then it tends to increase its infectious nature. Maybe with all the lockdowns that we had, with all the uh, stringent public health measures like masking, etc., it we created a bumpy road for it and it was trying to adapt to becoming more infectious. In fact, uh, uh, it's been very clearly said uh, by Joshua Lederberg, who got the Nobel Prize for Microbial Genetics in 1958. It is our wits against their genes. So they tend to adapt quite a lot. And we need to try and find ways to overcome that. In this particular case, right. it and appears, it's, it's, it's postulated that this virus may have had an ample opportunity to mutate in a person with a depressed immunity. So it stayed much longer in that person than it could stay in another person. So it had, it had enough time to make changes in itself. Right. So let's, let me ask you about the infectiousness and uh, uh, what does that mean fundamentally? Does it mean that if your immunity is low, then the chances are higher than what they were before or for the same immunity, the chances are higher? And uh, does it mean that there are more uh, virus bodies that are moving around now uh, or likely to, uh, you know, go out when someone breathes out? and therefore the chances increase. So what does infectiousness, more infectiousness exactly mean from a practical standpoint? Well, when the virus actually enters your body, it can be overcome quickly by your innate immunity or acquired immunity through a variety of other means. But once it starts entering the cells, particularly the cells in the respiratory tract, then it can cause damage by taking over the genetic machinery of the cell and replicating itself and then in that process cause disease. So in this case, it is entering the cells much more easily. It is not giving enough opportunity for your immunity, whether it is an innate immunity or an acquired immunity to overwhelm it and reject it and get rid of the infection before it causes disease. Therefore, the fact that it is gaining more easy entry into the cells means that it can actually cause infection translating into disease mild or severe whether it's mild or severe is going to depend ultimately on your immune response. But its ability to get into the cells becomes much easier. And, and uh, what is it that uh, I could change in my lifestyle that will make it more difficult for this virus in this new form, assuming I were to encounter it, to stop it from entering? Like you do it for any other vi virus. Uh, I mean, uh, even for the other form of the virus, even before it mutated. You have to definitely make sure that you are wearing your mask. You are not getting into crowded spaces, especially in indoor areas where the virus clouds can hang around. You should be able to clean your hands frequently so that even if you pick up the virus from any surface, that you're not going to be transferring it to your body. The whole idea here is the virus is able to move around fast from person to person and replicate faster in the cells of that human being because it enters more cells easily. But preventing it from reaching into our body is something that we have been practicing with masking, physical distancing, and washing. Those are measures that we must continue to take while we build up our own innate immunity by good food, good sleep, good um, exposure to sunlight. And these are the things that actually help us reject the virus even if it gets into our body. Right. So you're saying if I'm following all these protocols right now, as many of us have been over the last many months, then there is no real need for panic. And there is really no need for panic. But we recognize that even with all these precautions being taken, and everybody is not taking the precautions 100%, we know that the virus has been spreading. And the virus spreads much more when there is an opportunity by way of laxity among people. We have seen what has happened in Europe. The moment they started celebrating, it broke back again. Uh, even in uh, UK, the moment they started relaxing and opening the pubs and bars and restaurants and people started congregating, it started spreading. Therefore, we are giving the virus an opportunity to spread. In this particular case, this new mutant virus is able to infect more and faster, whereas 
if we can actually follow all the public health precautions, whether it's this virus or any other mutant, we should be able to prevent it from entering our body. And that's our major defense. Right. You know, so the, the uh, COVID-19 has been compared to many other uh, viruses and pandemics. Is this mutation or variant different? Does it correlate to some other or different type of uh, virus uh, from history that we've known or in behavior? Or is it really uh, the same or almost the same? Well, different viruses mutate at different rates. Even common cold viruses change. And that's why every year or two you change your... Uh, flu vaccines, uh, I mean, uh, influenza vaccines, you keep changing. Even common cold viruses keep changing. Viruses do change. Sometimes they become more virulent, sometimes they become less virulent, sometimes they become more infectious, right. sometimes they become less infectious. How long will this virus take to change its behavior? We do not know. But it is frequently adapting and it's changing its mutation. After all, it is trying its best stay in our global population. The way it can do that when we are trying to create roadblocks for it is to change the way it can infect more people. So that is what it's trying to do. But we have to try and keep it away from us till we get vaccines or till it changes into a form which learns to coexist with us without causing much damage. Right. And, and, and you mentioned vaccines, uh, which is obviously the next logical question, not just for India, but globally. Vaccines have already been administered in uh, England, United States, Canada. Other countries are also getting it and India will so soon start getting it. So will the vaccine as designed uh, at, uh, so far, will that be sufficient to counter this way mutation? Or now that we know mutations are coming, uh, future uh, incoming mutations or oncoming mutations? Well, uh, basically, uh, the situation is that this uh, particular vaccine, which is being developed we, uh, in terms of the mRNA vaccine or the uh, other vaccine, which is the virus uh, carrier type of vaccines like AstraZeneca, all of them are targeting the spike protein of the virus. And it is the spike protein is the key that the virus uses to get into the cell. Now, if your vaccine is able to deactivate the spike protein or destroy the spike protein because of the immunity that is created both by way of antibodies as well as by way of uh, T cell immunity, then the vaccine should continue to be effective even if the spike protein has slightly changed its character. It is the spike protein that gives the virus the crown. So if the virus still doesn't shed its crown, it's likely. But the inactivated vir uh, virus vaccine, which is different, which is not targeting the spike protein, is targeting the virus itself. Uh, right. That may not be much affected by this kind of mutation. And we are also producing that in India. In fact, the ICMR vaccine is an inactivated virus vaccine. So theoretically, it should be able to deal better even with these kind of mutations. Because only when you're targeting a particular portion of the virus like the spike protein, and if the spike protein is markedly altered in structure, then there is a danger that the vaccine may not be that effective. So right now, we do not see that danger existing with the nature of mutations that have arrived in this particular variant. Right. Uh, last question, uh, Dr. Reddy. So, you know, uh, uh, as a, from a public health point of view, at this point, uh, India, for instance, has shut all flights uh, to and from England. Uh, it's also uh, making passengers arriving from Middle East uh, and uh, European countries quarantine. So, uh, and that's one public uh, health response at the external front. In the internal front, in cities like Mumbai, there is curfew now going into uh, New Year's because obviously uh, congregation uh, risk is higher. And, and similarly, there are other responses. What's your sense on uh, what we should be doing from a public health point of view, particularly within India, uh, going into the next one month, and given the fact that we also have this new mutation hanging over us? Well, basically, let me say that as far as this particular uh, virus is concerned, while it was introduced to us on the 20th of December by the government of the United Kingdom, they have now said that it has been detected actually since September in the UK. And if it was around in September, 
we do not know how much it has spread by then. And we had people coming in from the UK. We had people coming in from elsewhere too. So it's possible that the virus could have actually spread to other countries. It is only countries who are regularly looking at the viral structures very seriously in their laboratories, testing laboratories, that are able to detect these changes. Even the CDC in the US has just said that their testing labs are not routinely looking for these kind of mutations. And therefore, they are not sure whether the virus has already entered the US and is spreading in the US. So we are unsure that just by stopping the flights right now, we have actually prevented the virus from entering. However, it has been said that so far there is no evidence of such a mutant having been detected in India. And if that is so, it's good for us, but we need to maintain the precautions certainly. But as flights resume, I think what we really need to do, of course, is to characterize the nature of the virus that is coming in detected in any test in the laboratory, in the big laboratories, right. but particularly emphasize a screening of incoming passengers for any symptomatic COVID or uh, test them and also maintain our regular defense. As I said, mask, physical distancing and washing. Those are the things that will happen, whether this mutant or any other mutant. Right. And let me add a quick extension to that last question. And and uh, if were, it were not for the, the fear of this new mu mutation, uh, how were things going? I mean, when you look at data over the last uh, two to three months, I mean, obviously, uh, overall case numbers are falling uh, are falling, and we are now in the 20s to 30 thousands, which is much lower than what it used to be before. Deaths are lower. So would this have continued and or uh, or were we on a good path, at least till this point? At least if you look at the uh, overall counts, and I, as I mentioned in the past, I look at deaths with greater confidence than just case numbers, yeah. because cases vary because of the testing criteria, testing methods. And definitely, it appeared that uh, the epidemic was on the wane. It was coming under control in any case. Uh, now, whether this is going to cause a setback, we have to wait and see. But if we maintain our public health vigil more than anything else, then I think we should continue our path of progress. Right. And that's an optimistic uh, note to end on. Uh, Dr. Sri, uh, Srinath Reddy, President of the Public Health Foundation of India. Thank you very much for uh, joining me and uh, speaking to us. Thank you.